This two and a half meter sheet of copper has inspired one of the largest treasure hunts in history, as well as multiple expeditions over decades, seeking to uncover an eye-watering amount of precious metals it's presumed to hide. The copper scroll may date back to as early as 25 AD, but most scholars place its origin around 70 AD, as the second temple lay in ruins following the bloody Roman siege on Jerusalem. The scroll was in such a fragile condition upon discovery that the Jordanian government had to send it to England to have it cut into multiple pieces as they thought it would crumble apart if they tried to unfold it. One of the questions that baffled anyone who tried to decipher the copper scroll is why is it so different from the other Dead Sea Scrolls surrounding it inside the same cave? It seemed so out of place that scholars believe that someone put it there at a later time from the other ancient documents. The author of the scroll remains unknown, and unlike the literary style of the other Dead Sea Scrolls, the Copper Scroll resembles a list of some sort. It is, however, no ordinary list, as it contains directions to 64 locations where staggering quantities of gold and silver are set to be hidden, alongside a cache of holy temple vessels used in purification rituals. This prompted some scholars to doubt the authenticity of the scroll, arguing that such unspeakable amount of treasure is more likely to be the stuff of legends. We'll explore the possible whereabouts of the treasure later in the video, but now let's have a look at some of these enigmatic instructions and the riches they promise to lead to. The very first entry of the Copper Scroll goes like this. In the ruin that is in the valley of Akor, under the steps with the entrance at the east, a distance of 40 cubits, a strong box of silver and its vessels with a weight of 17 talents. Here we get an idea of the structure all entries follow throughout the scroll. First, a general location is described, then it's narrowed down to a more specific spot sometimes specifying how deep to dig, and finally, the amount of treasure is declared in talents or ingots. Some entries end in a sequence of Greek letters, which no one knows what they mean. Here is another obscure line from the second column. In the cave of the old washer's chamber, on the third terrace, 65 ingots of gold. By this point, you may have noticed a problem with these instructions. The author assumes that the reader is familiar with all the places mentioned, but who is the old washer so we can find this chamber, and which one is the third terrace? Some say that this structure is the cave mentioned here, but we cannot ascertain the truth of this since this area is off limits. Place names have changed vastly across two millennia, making it very challenging for those pursuing the treasure to find these places on today's map. In the great cistern within the courtyard of the peristyle, along the far side of the ground, sealed up within the hole of the cistern slab, are 900 talents. A peristyle is an arrangement of columns enclosing a space within a building, and a cistern is a storage unit for water. This Hebrew word is the one used for peristyle, however, this word can also have another meaning a small hole. Specifically, the small hole found in the slab of stone used to cover the mouth of a cistern. Dead Sea Scroll scholar John Marco Allegro suggested that the region referenced here could be today's Qumran region, where archaeologists have dug up two courtyards, one of them contains a cistern. Was it the one referenced in this entry? It most likely isn't, since nothing was found there. Let's take a look at this intriguing entry. In the tomb that is in the riverine gulch of Hakafa, as one goes from Jericho towards Sakaka, there are buried talents at a depth of 7 cubits. It's not known for certain which or whose tomb is meant here, and the ravine once called Hakafa has not been precisely correlated to any place on modern maps. The town of Sakaka, however, is mentioned in chapter 15 of the book of Joshua where it belonged to the tribe of Judah. Although its place today remains unidentified, some scholars have suggested that Sakaka is actually the Qumran area. If that's correct, then according to this entry, 
the treasure should be lying somewhere within the six mile stretch of desert between Qumran and Jericho. Now this following entry has a more solid historical background that we happen to be familiar with. In the Queen's Palace on its western side, dig down 12 cubits and there are 27 talents. As with most details found in the scroll, no one knows for certain which queen is intended here. However, the most popular queen among the Jewish people during the Second Temple period was Queen Helena of Adiabene. Renowned Jewish historian Flavius Josephus mentions the queen and her palace in his book The Jewish Wars. Her palace was erected in Jerusalem where its remains have survived the test of time following its destruction by Roman forces in 70 AD and it was found beneath a parking lot near Jerusalem in 2007. Although we did locate the exact location of the palace, the 27 talents it's presumed to protect are yet to be found. Perhaps the entry is referencing a different queen to begin with. The next entry reads as follows. In dock, beneath the corner of the eastern level platform, dig down to a depth of 7 cubits, there are concealed 22 talents. Scholars have debated the actual identity of Dok, also known as the Mount of Temptation, which Christian tradition holds was the place where Jesus was tempted by Satan. The general consensus is that Dok is an ancient fortress mentioned in the first book of the Maccabees and referenced by Josephus in his most popular book, Antiquities of the Jews. Today, this place lies 1.5 kilometers west of Jericho. But while we know the general location of this entry, we cannot say where the specific level platform is. We know that similar structures were used in ancient times as surfaces where things were left to dry, but nothing more. Finally, the scroll leaves us reaching for this last piece of the puzzle. In the subterranean shaft, that is, on the north side of Kulith, its northern entrance, there are buried at its mouth a copy of this writing and its interpretation and their measures, with a detailed description of each and every thing. Although a part of the text is missing, there is a clue in this line that can give us an idea as to the location this entry is referencing. This Hebrew word refers to a specific subterranean shaft that was built near the sacrificial altar on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, down which the blood from sacrifices flowed. Could this complimentary scroll be buried somewhere beneath this area? The text states that this further body of instructions shall aid the seeker with more detailed descriptions to better understand each entry in the copper scroll, which could have been quite handy. But being part of the very treasure we are attempting to find in the first place, no one has managed to unearth it yet. In total, over 4,600 talents of precious metal are listed on the scroll, a hoard whose value exceeds a billion US dollars in today's money. It's an exciting possibility that such relics could be lying there for two millennia, hidden away in this arid remote part of Israel, awaiting to be discovered. The question is, will they? Let's investigate the odds of actually finding this treasure. Biblical scholar Theodor Herzl-Gaster presented a few potential theories regarding the origin and ultimate whereabouts of the Copper Scroll treasure. The most popular theory argues that the treasure is that of the second Jewish temple. If this is the case, then our chances of actually finding it are likely to be slim. This is because an established source, namely historian Flavius Josephus, stated that the treasure was still inside the temple when it fell to the Romans in 70 AD, who most likely plundered all of it. This is further confirmed by a historical artifact that exists to this day, the Arch of Titus that depicts Roman soldiers carrying off the stolen treasure along with precious temple furniture. But even if the authors of the scroll somehow managed to hide the treasure before the Romans arrived, it wasn't that uncommon for the Romans to torture war captives in the most horrific of ways to get them to reveal the whereabouts of hidden treasures. Now, what if the treasure actually belonged to the first Jewish temple? This theory too is far-fetched because the first temple was destroyed by the Babylonians 
In the year 586 BC, more than 500 years before the most agreed upon origin date of the Copper Scroll, this left Gaster to his final theory, which he labeled his favorite, that the treasure is simply a hoax. However, since metals like copper and bronze were common materials for official and highly important documents back then, some scholars regard the Copper Scroll and its treasure as authentic. One of them was archaeologist and Dead Sea Scroll scholar John Marco Allegro, who embarked on an expedition himself to the Qumran area, retraced some of the places mentioned in the scroll, and excavated potential burial spots. However, he and his team returned empty-handed. Following in Allegro's footsteps, a more recent treasure hunter named Jim Barfield used triangulation techniques based on the scroll's instructions and actually found some of those locations in 2007. One of said locations was the remains of a pool measuring precisely 40 cubits long, exactly where the scroll said it should be. The only reason he couldn't go any further, however, was that the Israeli government had to prevent him from carrying out further excavations for security reasons. Was he mere steps away from this long-hidden treasure? For now, we can't know for sure. Maybe all a future treasure hunter will need is just an official permission for this mystery treasure to see the light. Or perhaps after the Romans achieved their victory and left, the surviving Jewish people retrieved these valuables in case they hadn't been looted already and spent them on rebuilding Jerusalem. The possibilities abound. But what we know for certain is that this sheet of copper will, for now, remain a mystery awaiting to be resolved. Researching this topic was so exciting, I really hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you did, a like and subscribe would go a long way in motivating me to make more content like this in the future. Have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you in the next one.